right, so it is May 29th. It's about 7.30 in the morning. 69 degrees outside. And I got me a box of bees here. Um, this is slowly becoming one of my favorite kind of small scale queen rearing methods. Uh, it works really, really well. So let me tell you what I've got here. Um, this nuke box I made up yesterday afternoon. There's nothing in there except for a feeder, a piece of comb, and some uh, maybe some starter strips. I've got my graft bar in there, um, and I'm going to have to get it out. Now, where all those bees came from, if you come right down here to this box here with a little A on the front of it, uh, that box right there was full of bees, and it had three supers full of bees. They've made almost three supers of honey. Um, the laying pattern's great. Uh, that box was overwintered single, come through strong. I pulled a medium super of brood and honey off to make splits earlier this year, added another medium super, and they filled up all that with honey. So a really, really good queen. So what I ended up doing yesterday, um, I took the supers off one at a time, brought them down here. Then I brought the high body down here. I went through, found the queen, I set her to the side out of the eight frames in that high body I shook about six of those frames of bees over here into this uh, into this box plus I put the um, plus the worker bees come from this box over to here so I've really weakened this box probably isn't going to make me any honey during the sourwood honey flow but that's okay those bees are going to make me plenty of queens so the bees that are in the supers the supers also have brood in them as well um i know this bottom super does or there may be a little this bottom super probably has some i don't think there's very much in the second super but those nurse bees will come down plus they've got uh most of the a lot of those frames in the bottom were uh or capped it's capped brood so they're going to be hatching out and filling back up pretty quick but all the a lot of the nurse bees from the main uh, brood nest are in this nuke box, plus the worker bees are in this nuke box. So this nuke box is packed full of bees. What I'll do now is I'm going to pull that graft bar out, and uh, I'm going to get it out. Then I'm going to come over here. I've already got the frame picked out from yesterday afternoon that I want to graft from. I've already got it picked out, so all i got to do is take those supers off and grab that frame. So that make my life a little bit easier. And we'll graft and put those grafts in there. Um, I did this same thing a couple weeks ago and I think I put like 60 uh, grafts in there and I think they ended up pulling like 40 some queen cells. All right, so here was the cell builder that I made at that other bee yard. It's just in that green nuke, one of my old plywood nukes. Um, this is that same end. You guys have seen these hives a lot where we've made queens. Uh, where that green nuke was, used to sit this hive here. It was a, uh, there's a deep, a medium, and a shallow, and then it had a queen excluder, and then that other deep on top where I had put a, a box of cat brood up there, you know, to make my cell builder and everything. So needless to say this box was it's a big hive i mean it's got a lot of bees a lot of workers a lot of activity but i moved it i left it facing in the same direction but i moved it down here and then i put this little nuke box that i shook full of bees um i put it in its place so all those workers are coming back to that location and it's slowly starting to really get crowded. Um, the box is already full of nurse bees because I shook probably, went to two hives and shook, you know, a good chunk of the brood nest from two hives in there. There's probably seven or eight frames of bees, nurse bees that I shook from the other yard into that green box. And now they're gonna get all the workers from that other hive, so. Now I did leave a, I did leave a frame of brood in that nuke when I brought it over. Um, I thought I left two, but I only left one. I just took it out. So I can do a quick, maybe do a little quick peek here in there. 
the uh, camera is not really doing it justice. It is full. So, and it's going to get even more so. All right, so we set this sail builder up yesterday. Around lunchtime, maybe a little bit before. You can see there's quite a few bees in there. Let's take a look on the inside. See what it looks like. Take this block off. Let's just... You can see it's... It's definitely full of bees. So I'm just gonna double check, make sure there's no brood in there, then I'm gonna go graft. And this is why you check. Didn't think there was any brood on that frame, but evidently there was. So this frame will not go back in. Check the rest. All right, so I went through that hive, that little nuke box there, and. I found that one frame had a bunch of cells on it. There was a second frame in there that had, I think five on it. I just mashed those down and uh, took, the, took that one frame out, did my grafts and I put my uh, grafting frame right back in the middle. There's two frames of starter strips in there for them to draw comb, one frame of pollen and honey. And uh, we got our, ma our major honey flow on right now, so. I'll probably I might come back out here and put a feeder on them a little bit later, but I'm just gonna leave them alone for now and We will uh, see what we get so That was plenty for me. I'm gonna put another uh, 50 or 60 in here probably and 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 we'll see we'll see what they get. I mean some of the sales aren't that good um, so I have to call some of them but that's what we're doing like i say it's it's small scale queen rearing and like the main thing is you need a box full of bees so i'll try to uh open this thing up and show you kind of what i've got on the inside all right so let's open it up and uh, get my graph frame out now one thing i didn't mention you know a lot of people use a lot bigger cell builder uh, they'll use a full-size box but they'll run a couple of runs of queens through here before they have to replenish. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to use this box one time. They're going to make this one run of queens for me, and I'm going to leave probably two cells in this box um, when it's all said and done. When I come out here to to take these queen cells out, then I will leave two. I'll put a frame in place of the graph frame. And I will leave two cells with it and this will be one of my splits or my queen castles or whatever you want to call it so Like I say, when it's on, I say it's full of bees. That sucker's full of bees.
probably make one more good run of queens um, I might make two I might make one in the middle of June and then I may make one in the middle of July I like to make one in July because uh, in July you know our sourwood honey flow is gonna start on almost every year it starts June 14th or 15th and I'll take all my biggest strongest hives down there or up there to Wilts County to uh, to the sourwood and then whenever I get done up there you know I'm gonna put a skateboards on hives I'm gonna do that on these tomorrow and I'll put a skateboards on hives and it's gonna run all those bees from those supers down into the high body or the high body and super or whatever I leave on them and you know I've got all that strength there and I don't want to waste that strength I actually want to pull some of that strength off and use it to make split so the last couple years I've actually uh, I've either put a hive body on and let all the bees from the supers fill the hive body and then pulled the hive body of bees off and put a mated queen. I like to do mated queens. Uh, put a mated queen in those splits and then put the queen cells back in the castles or the nukes that I pulled the queens out of. And then whatever I have, uh, you know, those queen cells, they hatch or they emerge. They go out and get mated. The ones that get mated, that's great. The ones that don't. I just combine those with the queens that do so we'll be making some videos on that but at the end of the honey flow you have a lot of bees in those supers that go down in that high body and they really pack and I've even had uh, some times where I've robbed bees and there just be so there be like one or two gallons of bees hanging off the front of the hive because there's just so many bees that come out of those supers into that high body that there's not enough room for them and what ends up happening is they just end up dying and they almost I, I feel like they almost go to waste and you know I can take that surplus of bees off of these hives and put them into other hives with queens and you know feed them a little bit and they make me more hives so instead of letting a strong hive just dwindle into the fall I take the surplus off the hive and I just let them go on into the fall at a steady strength the whole way through so I don't know if that makes sense to everybody else, but it sure makes a lot of sense to me and it allows me to basically, you know, if I've got 15, 20 hives <clears throat> in a yard, I get a, a basically full box splits off of all those. And a lot of times, um, you know, they do really, really well. Every uh, full size box that was in this, on these stands here, that's what they were. They were all splits off of my, off my sourwood. Uh, producing bees last year so and you can see I mean they've they produced me quite a bit of honey the the, the sourwood hives have too but um you know it's it's a gamble but if you use mated queens it's you get a pretty high success rate but even even walk away splits you know you can uh you can do that or you can put queen cells in it I mean worst case scenario you say you got 10 hives you make 10 splits you get a 
60 to 70 percent success rate you're going to end up with instead of 10 hives going in the winter you're going to end up with 16 or 17. so beekeeping's all about numbers y'all have a good one